Hi folks, thanks for tuning into this week's Stacker Chat. Stacks is smart contracts for Bitcoin, and I'm joined by Muni Bali, Stacks founder, with your regular updates. So we've been talking for a little bit about how we are entering a bear market, um, but it feels a little bit different when we have events like Celsius halting withdrawals and several institutions who might be insolvent. How does this bear market feel different to you? And sort of what are the implications for the future? Yeah, I think we have, we have kind of like discussed uh, bear markets uh, here before as well. So I've personally seen a bunch of cycles and I think we were kind of anticipating it uh, at a company level at Trust Machines. I think they're fully prepared. That's why we did fundraising and announced it in, in Q1. And in general, I, I continue to believe that, you know, bear markets are one of the best times to put your heads down and actually work on uh, building the products, product, finding product market fit, like because the noise level kind of like goes down and you want to be building something that people actually want and people want to use and you have true product market fit. And I think uh, the, the bear markets are actually a much better time for doing that uh, versus kind of like, you know, the, the noisy environment of a, of a bull market. Uh, in general, about what's different this time, I, you know, like you can look at historical stuff and learn some lessons, but every cycle is kind of different. This time, one thing that stands out to me is uh, there is a kind of like a global, uh, like outside of crypto markets are coming down as well, right? And we might be entering some sort of a recession here in the US. So that might actually impact uh, the crypto downturn more than, than we think. And, and this time we've actually seen uh, sort of like, you know, you, you brought up Celsius, uh, they're, they're very kind of like new type of dynamics coming out where, you know, maybe some people were over leveraged and they are now getting liquidated. And these type of dynamics did not really exist in earlier cycles, right? So yes, the DeFi industry has matured and those are tools for decentralization and transparency. But I do think that there are new types of products and things available uh, and we are seeing the unwinding of some of the bad aspects of that, right? So that, I think that element is, is new as well. And we have to kind of like, you know, uh, wait and see how, how it plays out. All right, thank you. Now, Web5, a project led by Jack Dorsey and the team at Block, took Twitter by a storm recently. Um, can you give an overview of what you know of the project and how it compares to Stack's approach to building on Bitcoin? Yeah, so I think first of all, um, I'm I'm really excited and glad to see that happen, right? Because uh, the more builders there are in the Bitcoin ecosystem, and the more kind of like experiments there are, it's almost like an idea maze, right? Like different people are trying out different versions uh, of, of 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 designs and architectures, and it's great to basically like as as a collective uh, think about you know how we can collaborate more with each other each other, how can we kind of like just grow the Bitcoin builders community? Because to me, um, the bigger thing over here is if we are being honest, the entire kind of like community of developers in the broader Bitcoin ecosystem is a lot smaller than what's happening outside of Bitcoin. And if you truly believe that, you know, Bitcoin is the foundational thing, Bitcoin is the true money layer, and it's the, it's the most secure, most decentralized system, then you, you'd like to see a lot more developers in Bitcoin and people who are building there, right? So there are a bunch of projects already, like, you know, that we've discussed before, like obviously Stacks, RSK, Lightning, DLCs, and, and so on. And now I think this is another kind of like serious project with a uh, serious engineering effort behind it. And that's great to see. So in terms of kind of like the technical design and differences, uh, we've actually spent a bunch of time, like I personally spent a bunch of time uh, working on uh, these types of architectures, right? So these are actually not blockchain solutions. Like they, um, the use of blockchains is very, very minimal in these types of designs. So Web5 and, and, and the people behind it kind of like admitted that uh, it is, it is they're standing on the shoulder of giants in their own world, in their own words, right? Like, because they are repackaging a lot of existing projects and ideas over the last five, six years. Um, most importantly, there has been work around decentralized identifiers or DIDs. Right? Um, I was actually part of the Decentralized Identity Foundation, helped 
um, almost like started uh, with two other people in late 2016, early 2017. So I've actually spent a fair amount of time in, in, in that world before. And Web5 is kind of like trying to revive those types of projects, which are saying that, hey, we don't want to do anything on, on blockchain. So there are no smart contracts. There are no kind of like programming functionality uh, for, from a smart contract perspective uh, for, for developers. And you're just registering some sort of a hash, right? Like it's the, you can think of the uh, DID as like a, some sort of a hash that's registered at a blockchain level. And then people can use that to discover usernames. And most of the data uh, and processing happens on someone's local computer or a node that you own. So it's more like a peer-to-peer -peer design. Uh, you're kind of like going back to the era even before Bitcoin, right? Like when there were more peer-to-peer -peer systems like BitTorrent and LimeWire and things like that. And you're trying to add some sort of a data storage and, and, and computing ability uh, to these nodes. So it's a very, very kind of like interesting uh, area in general. Um, my kind of like the reason why I stopped pursuing some of those design and am fully dedicated to building smart contracts around Bitcoin is that from what I've seen is that these types of projects uh, have historically not been able to get a lot of developer uh, traction, right? So some developers get interested in it, they build some things, typically users um, are, are far <laughs> and few. And, and then even just the developer tooling around these projects has never really matured to a level where it kind of like goes through some sort of a, 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 a traction point, right? So that's, that's kind of like just market data that look, these ideas are not new uh, at all, right? Like, and if anything, they've been around for, for so long that you need to uh, have a very honest kind of like analysis of like, what's, why, why aren't these ideas taking off, right? On, on the flip side, uh, smart contracts are almost like a, a new type of a computing environment, right? Like the, they were simply not possible before. They didn't exist uh, before. And, and we are seeing market data that developer traction for smart contracts is actually very, very high. Uh, there's a lot of like really good talent, a lot of capital that is uh, coming to this space. And, and these developers, I think that's the developer market fit. Like, so if you're a developer platform, you're looking for product market fit and your product market fit is uh, the developers, do they actually, actually want to use this thing or not? And we have had that experience firsthand, uh, like when we started uh, focusing on SACS, like the current version that people know about that has smart contracts, that has a global ledger and people can build whatever they want on it. I think the developer traction just basically went through the roof. And I think that uh, that is a lesson that, that uh, basically makes me uh, make, 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 like I want uh, Web5 and the project to succeed, but at the same time, uh, I have firsthand experience knowing how hard these types of projects can be, right? So I think uh, my kind of like comment to the team as well, that they should be very aware of the challenges ahead of them. And we are, we are in generally rooting for them and we would like love to collaborate with them as much as possible. We are already in touch with kind of like a few team members and, and our doors are always open. Thank you. All right. And so some interesting stats were actually shared earlier this week about .BTC names versus .ETH names. And it feels like we're still in the first inning here, but what did that um, sort of indicate to you about future traction? Yeah, so I think the stats were something like there are like 100,000 people with .ETH names on Twitter. Uh, there's something like maybe 1,500 or, or less uh, with .BTC names and then some other projects like Tezos uh, and Solana might have like other, um, I think Tezos is a little more than .BDC and Solana might be at 10,000. So at a high level, the biggest lesson for me is like, look, the crypto community is so, so small, right? Like you're talking about less than 200,000 people in total, right? And Bitcoin is by far the biggest brand, right? So if you're thinking about uh, things going mainstream, I think a lot more people recognize the Bitcoin brand than anything else. And it's the more decentralized, most uh, secure blockchain. So in terms of like this number going from like a hundred thousand to more than uh, like the dot PC domains going from like just a thousand to like a hundred thousand or even a million, like you can very easily imagine that, right? Like there are millions of people who already know Bitcoin and if they can log into applications using their dot PC name, if they, if you, if there's like a lot of utility behind this decentralized uh, domain name, 
uh, it could be really, really interesting. But even in terms of community, like I don't think that the broader Bitcoin community is even aware of the .BTC names yet, or there might be some uh, Bitcoin hardliners that have issues with the way Stacks maintains a global ledger and has a gas token, and because of which they might not want to want to use the .BTC name. So I think those are some upcoming uh, challenges to look at. But in terms of potential, I feel like there's an enormous potential for growth. And I think we are super, super early. And if anything, these stats kind of kind of like solidify that. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Stacker Chats, everyone. Thanks, Vinny, for being here. Um, please make sure to like this video. Let us know if you have any questions, either in the comments below or on Twitter. Um, and make sure that you're subscribed for more content like this. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.